How old are you? I'll ask any one of you. How old are you? How old are you? 44. How old are you? 46. How old are you? 73. No, this is not your age. Which means you don't know biology. You have forgotten your biology. You are, you are only 6 months old on a given day. Because every 6 months you have a new body. Every cell is new. Even poets knew that. Auden so beautifully wrote, No man can get into the same river twice. Go home and think about it. What you are saying is your chronological age. Now every cell in your body is new at the end of 6 months. But you, your mind, that is your thought process, your consciousness, keeps telling that new cell, I am 74 years old, I am 73 years old, I am 46 years old, I am 28 years old. And then that memory gets held on and the cell thinks it is 74 years old. Did you understand that? So you are as old as you think you are. Of course, women are slightly younger than their rivals. That's the difference. <laughs> That's the different thing. That's the definition by, say, no, slightly different definition. Now, I was asked to speak or, or uh, lecture in honor of this great man sitting here. Professor P.C. Thomas. He, he was described as a good teacher. Who is a good teacher? A good student is a good teacher. A good teacher is not one who comes to the class and verbatim repeats what is in the book onto the student's notebook without letting the student think and he of course doesn't think. That's a menace of a teacher. I call them as banking system teachers. But the true teacher is a midwife. What does a midwife do? She stands by the side of a pregnant mother in pain, coaxing her, cajoling her, empathizing with her, sympathizing with her, provoking her. Who delivers? The mother. In the class, the teacher delivers. No, he should not deliver. Because if you know biology again, on the day you are made in your mother's womb, not on the day you are born, that little speck of you, today you may be 70 kilos, that day do you how heavy you were? Roughly, how heavy you were? That is today. No, no, when you were made in the mother's womb, you were a zygote, zygote, you know zygote, with a combination of a mother's ovum with the father's spermatozoan, a speck of protein which weighed 0 0.000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
all these things became so called sciences in the 12th century when European churches became universities. And at that time, everybody thought they are the. But science changed completely in 1925. Does anyone know why science changed in 1925? No. The conventional sciences started probably in the 17th century with a boy called Rene Descartes who thought the thinking part of man is different from the other part of the body cogito ergo sum so he said res cogitans the thinking part res extensa the other parts cut off he cut the body from the mind so we started with reductionism today you don't look at the fish as a whole you look at the fish one cell of the fish or one leg of the fish and then study that that is not the whole fish and you would be surprised fish has a consciousness fascinating consciousness fish knows what to do a fish born in Mangalore can go to New York if nobody catches it but it will come back to Mangalore to die if nobody kills it because fish has a fascinating piezoelectric crystal in its eye and it is from there we understood in so called science the ultrasound sonography sound supposing I talk sound goes in every direction but ultrasound goes only in straight line and when it goes and hits the wall it comes back this is called the ultrasound philosophy which was learned from fishes by the navy of germany in the second world war and the naval sonar was developed on the fish eye pattern with the piezoelectric crystal which vibrates and then throws the ultrasound and the ultrasound goes and catches the enemy submarine comes back then they know exactly where the enemy submarine is you can bombard it from that data we have now got medical ultrasonography you are pregnant we will we'll put that thing on your tummy and say your fetus is male or female has legs or no legs or head or one head or two heads and things like that or we put it in the heart and say how big or how small is your heart most of this is only shadow study studying the shadows shadow is not the man you would see in the morning you have a long shadow at noon you have no shadow at all evening you have again long shadow so you are not three human beings you are only one human being but we doctors depend on the shadows and treat patients we don't treat the human beings we treat the reports this is where science has come now now what is the science then the true science is trying to understand this universe which the understanding has changed now this universe was called by Indian philosophers of Sankhya age as a miracle Maya and today's latest science the 21st century science says in German it says Werklichkeit. Werklichkeit is a word which means drama changing drama the world is a changing drama it is there it is not there even physics for example I was thinking that I am not uh, I am not I am good at keeping people awake but uh, this young lady is sleeping right in the front bench let her sleep I don't mind people sleeping but I have only one objection don't snore because your neighbor also wants to sleep <laughs> coming back to science 1925 there was a student in the class and his teacher was quote unquote great his name was Albert Einstein which you and your textbook say was a great man a great scientist and what have you but you never allow our students to find out whether it is true or not because you know our system is such that we don't have education now we have educare you give him a syllabus he must know what you tell him in short Alexis Carroll Nobel laureate is a scientist is a doctor a physician a surgeon rather who wrote very interesting every newborn child is a genius to be converted into an idiot in school <laughs> Rabindra Tagore went to school and he found school difficult first class impossible so he came and told his father I don't want to go to school because it's very difficult so father said okay do what you like never went to school but the man gets a Nobel Prize in 1913 for English poetry can you believe that he has not studied English in uh, Cambridge school or, or, or uh, Montessori school or, or uh, Australian school and things like that no he never studied he wrote Geetanjali in Bengali somebody told me oh you should have written it in English man you should have gone to school you would have got a great thing he said okay you want me to write it in English I will write 
and he studied english who taught him not pc thomas he taught himself and within 2 years he wrote geetanjali de novo in english that was in 1911 and nobody bothered who is tagore nobody knows if you are somebody very big then whatever you say whatever you say goes and that too if you get a prize like nobel prize and all you can say this is now night they'll say yes because he is a nobel laureate he said it's night we must be all wrong he must be right this is a foolish thing if you read that book called prize you know how the, you get nobel prize it's one of the biggest uh, lobbying that goes on in this world and usually the wrong people get it that's besides the point now come back to our science this boy was in the class and albert einstein was talking big things about physics e is equal to mc squared blah 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 this boy got up and said sir you're wrong and you're talking through your hat and all your thinking is wrong that's not the correct formula and he gave a formula p q e is not equivalent to q p this is called the uncertainty principle and what happens to a student who gets up and tells his professor you're wrong what happens he becomes an outstanding student yes his name was werner heisenberg he became an outstanding student for 31 years this was in 1925 he propounded the uncertainty principle p q is not equivalent to q p and it was in 1956 after albert einstein died in 55 that he gets the nobel prize for physics the only nobel prize which is worth its weight probably not even in diamond platinum is worth its weight of of something which is very very good now that is the principle which changed science so if you think you know that have you heard of the fish net hypothesis fish net hypothesis anyone you are all ichthyologists right you know ichthyology studying fish so ichthyologists wanted to start science so they said okay we will study fish so they went to the sea and had a net collected the fish brought it to their laboratory and measured it with what i was seeing there some measure weight measure and something you know warner warner caliper or whatever they measured and came a hypothesis they wrote a piece piece it became a phd thesis saying that all fish in the sea are bigger than 2 inches in size became a hypothesis it was accepted by the peer reviewing committee and it was published in the international journal of ichthyosis right then what happened it went on everybody accepted it because a market immediately it was taken to the market so market said any fish bigger than 2 inches is sea fish come on i will sell it they made money so science is money making money and then somebody was a, there was a thinker called pc thomas who said why every fish must be too bigger than 2 inches so pc thomas went to the sea with a smaller net hole so he caught less than 2 inches also so science is called fish net hypothesis this hypothesis was propounded by a great nobel laureate physicist his name is sir arthur stanley eddington eddington was a contemporary of einstein actually to make einstein great in the textbooks this eddington is responsible so eddington brought him to the english speaking world einstein was not even known because what work einstein quoted was all original work of lawrence poincare and fitzgerald and einstein's wife nicely plagiarized it and wrote a paper putting the all the things together because they all wrote it in 1899 she wrote it in 1905 and together they published it and some or other you know the rest is history you all have read that you have read the history but not the truth most of the time history is not the truth now coming back to our friend eddington eddington put forward this hypothesis saying that science is not sacrosanct science cannot really answer any question certain questions science can never answer like for example is there god a msc scientist will say no not likely because i have not seen him i can't measure him in my laboratory so where is god phd science says there is no god forget about it there is no god at all how can he be there i have not seen him i am a phd how can he be there so god doesn't exist but then a thinking nobel laureate whose name is peter medever wrote a beautiful book small book read it it's difficult not difficult to read about 104 pages it's called limits of science book's name is limits of science where he says come sir why did you sit down our australian friend i know he believes 
latest science to scientific research in medicine says sitting in the chair reduces your lifespan. <laughs> I'm not joking. That is called reductionist science. You just collect a cohort of people and then say how many hours they sat, how many hours they worked and things like that and come to some conclusion, immediately write a paper. After some time, someone else will write and say, standing is bad for health. <laughs> this, is, this is called reductionist science. Reductionist science. You know, you must have had so many papers saying coffee is very good for health. And you have equal number of this, so coffee is very bad for health. Like for example, you all thought fish is very good for health. It's got, you know, what is that called? Um, omega 3, this, uh, that and all. All these are created, you know, fat. Fat was fat. We all knew fat. Now we created caste system in fat. Saturated fat, unsaturated fat, semi-saturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, omega fat, this fat, that fat. All fat is no good or good. Actually, the man who did this study of fat and health, the first man, his name is Ansel Case. Ansel Case was given... 110 million, 110 thousand dollars to find out the relationship between fat and heart disease. So Ansel Case went, he went to Australia, he went to Malaysia, he went to India, he went to uh, Japan, he went to USA, studied groups of people and then put it together in a XY graph. You know, that's what you do, no? One next year, one next year, this fat here and heart attack here, it was not a straight line. Whenever you are given grant money, you are indirectly told you must get positive results. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not joking, man. I'm not joking. Am I joking? No, 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 no. What I am talking here, I may make it look a little hilarious, but it's not just the science, 100% science that I'm talking to you. So Ansel Case had real problem. So he sat. This is called doctoring your data. So he sat down and then what to do? I must get a straight line. So he sat and maneuvered, 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 maneuvered. After 22 countries he studied, he eliminated very conveniently 15 countries. <laughs> I mean, it's, nobody knows, no? If you, if you read his paper, you don't know this. But you must go deep into it, you'll get to know. Now what happened? He got a straight line. At the bottom was Tokyo, Japan. At the top was USA. And in between Germany, US, US and some four or five countries. Australia was not there, because it, is eliminated. It, it was eliminated. So he wrote a paper in 1951 saying that fat is the be-all and end-all of atherosclerosis and heart disease. 1961, there was a thinking biochemist in London University. He is a very, very interesting fellow. This fellow did a study, same data he took. Instead of fat, he took sugar. So he put sugar in the x-axis, heart attack in the y-axis, and straight line. <laughs> and he said, cane sugar is the be all and end all of atherosclerosis. 1963, I had a colleague of mine in the London University, we were working together. He was a very good cardiologist. So he was collecting data on number of trousers sold in Europe since the Second World War and heart attack. So he put the thing straight line again. What does it mean? Since the Second World War, there was affluence in Europe. Europe had more money, so people ate more sugar, people ate more fat, people buy, bought more trousers. And now this is called the, the, what is called parallelism. These two things go up. If you have a lot of money, don't you buy two trousers? Suppose if you didn't have money, you will buy only one trouser. If you still didn't have money, you will only have a loincloth. So this is, this is the, what happens in society. But then, you call it a cause effect, that's a dangerous thing. Now omega-3 came. Omega-6 came, Omega-3 went away. Now there are enough papers to say eating too much of Omega-3 is very bad for the heart. So this is not real science. This is called reductionist science. Where you reduce everything into two bits and have some relationship. I'll tell you now, you all get worried. Oh, my, my tummy is big, uh, my sugar is slightly on the higher side. There's a thing called cholesterol, I believe. I don't know what that is. It's a white powder, I know. It does, it's a harmless thing. You, you need it. If you don't have cholesterol, you will die because every cell wall is cholesterol. Did you understand that? And you get billions of cells every day being new formed. Okay, I said you are all six months old. To be six months old, you must have plenty of cholesterol. Now if a doctor goes and you reduce your cholesterol, probably you will meet your maker a little faster, quicker. That's all what happens. Now anyway, all this came, all this went. 
they were all connected then we had a study called mr fit study mrfit multiple risk factor intervention trial which started 25 years ago and when it started in the 80s president nixon was the president so he reluctantly sanctioned 150 million dollars for the study 150 million dollars and told them this enormous amount of money i want very strong results very strong positive results we get the all that now okay it went on it studied 500000 americans picked up 100000 americans and followed them up now for 25 years in the first 5 years they said oh yes reducing cholesterol reducing sugar reducing your blood pressure is very good for you it went on and on and on at the 25th year somebody analyzed it to find out that risk factor interventions with the drugs or surgery will reduce the risk factors but not the risk of premature death did you get that risk factors will only reduce the risk factors in short this is surrogate evidence of something like for example i have a nice slide today i didn't bring slides because i thought no i don't shouldn't show you slides i have a nice slide for global warming somebody got nobel prize for global warming nothing has happened globe has been warmer than this 100 years ago don't worry about that now somebody produced global warming data i have a surrogate evidence i have a slide which shows women's underwear since the 18th century in the 18th century the underwear was very big you know it used to come almost up to the knee then it became smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller it's almost invisible now because its globe is <laughs> globe is warming you know <laughs> what is that called surrogate evidence and the mr fit study showed that at the end of 25 years intervened people died more than the not intervened people did you get that whose blood pressure sugar everything was tightly controlled with drugs they were not there but the others were there still it like yale university kept a record of their gold medalists in athletics the gold medalists were not there after 50 the silver medalists were still there up to 60 the bronze medalists were running till 70 and the also runs were there 80 90 and you will be surprised a study was done in french nursing homes nursing homes in there means doesn't mean in indian concept of nursing home nursing home is old age home and there were ladies 80 90 years old they had cholesterol 800 900 and so the study said if you have very high cholesterol you will live long which is true actually which is true so friends this is a science that we are talking about that's called the science of fish net hypothesis so peter medever wrote science cannot answer questions because science is not holistic science is not designed to answer such questions science can say how big is the fish why is the fish in the sea why is some fish not in the sea why are some fishes in the river science doesn't answer where is god science doesn't answer so he says science is only designed for a particular purpose like for example railway engine is designed to run on a railway track supposing you go and say i want this railway engine to fly like a plane it can't do so a question is science can science answer god no because it can't it's not designed to answer god so science don't think science is the end of everything actually i would recommend you a good book it's called against method what's the book's name against method our professor from bombay must read this hmm because you know he is teaching science so against method this is written by a man called peter firebend f e y e r b e n d otherwise he'll make a mistake in the spelling f e y e r b e n d firebend paul he was a professor of science philosophy in the london school of economics it's one of the you no know, famous schools and there science philosophy is a very big department it was dominated for about 30 years by a great thinker called karl popper have you heard of popper p o p p e r karl popper dominated london school of economics for 30 years followed by his student firebend and firebend so beautifully writes he says the all the ills of the 21st century world are due to the so called science's superiority supremacy over all other rights of human thinking today you think anything is scientific what is scientific going to moon is scientific right 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 of course we didn't go to moon we went to mars that doesn't matter that's because pq is pr is pq is not equivalent to Q, qp 2 into 3 may be 6 but 3 into 2 need not be 6 in real science but you teach the student 2 into 3 6 3 into 2 also is 6 that's called absolutist mind 
we develop a student of an absolutist mind, one track mind, like a tunnel vision, like a horse. What we need is a multivistic mind. You have to take all things into consideration. Even that is no good. There are, there are some schools which teach you multivistic school, but not, not going to happen. The real wisdom is, you must have wisdom. That is, you take absolutist, multivistic and think yourself and then come up with your own solution. That is called wisdom. So friends, knowledge is not wisdom. Knowledge dwells in heads replete with thoughts of other men. But wisdom dwells in heads attentive to their own. Knowledge is so proud, I know so much. No, I am a PhD, I am this, I am MD, I am... But wisdom says, I don't know much. Wisdom is so humble because it knows no more. Knowledge and wisdom, far from being one, have nothing in common at all. The wiser you are, the humbler you become. And that's Indian education. Indian education says, Vidya Dadati Vinayaha. You become humbler and humbler. The humbler you are, more educated you are. But today, education gives you arrogance. Degree. This all the western thoughts, we are taking it and fully imbibing it and saying that's the right way to do it. No, there are other ways to do it also. So coming back to our point, fish for health, I am supposed to talk on health. Now I must, I have defined fish, now I have to define health. Then only I can say well, what is for what. What is health, what is your idea of health? You have all heard, Alma, Alta, uh, this thing of uh, the United WHO, it's absence of physical, mental, spiritual, environmental, this, that, all kinds of absence of this. No, no disease at all is called health. No, there is no human being from birth to death who has no disease. If I now scan all of you for a cancer cell, each one of us, including me, will have not one cancer, at least about 10 cancers to 100 cancers. But they don't become cancer disease. They are cancer cells. Today what do we do? Get every woman, take a cervical smear and say, oh, dysplastic cell. Ah, this may become a cancer. This is called predicting the unpredictable linearly. Did you understand? Linearity doesn't work in science in universe. Universe is non-linear. How can you linearly predict? You can have a cancer cell in the cervix and the woman can live 100 years. You may not have a cancer cell in the cervix. The woman may come down with a very bad cancer in one year. Both are possible. And this is possible because the predictions of the future are not scientifically correct. Take, why go that far? Take your weather prediction. You think it is very scientific, no? Mangalore is supposed to have rains today. Did you see yesterday's prediction? Go out and see whether it is raining. It won't rain. Kobe in Japan had the best supercomputer. But before that huge thing, an earthquake happened in Kobe which killed thousands of people. Even seconds before that, the nearest meteorological laboratory had no inkling into that. If you really want to know how you can't predict the future, please write down. You are writing one? Right. Predicting the unpredictable future. Predicting the unpredictable future. Did you write that? The author's name is Firth, William Firth. Firth, F-I-R-T-H, W-J. And the journal is, this you can get free on the internet. Journal is called British Medical Journal, B-E-M-J. Got it? Here is 1991. Now, Vancouver system you follow, I saw outside. So, semicolon 303, colon 1568. Go and see. Now, what does it show? You cannot predict tomorrow because there is no tomorrow according to quantum physics. Tomorrow doesn't exist. We create a tomorrow too. There is no world. World is a Maya. Now, you all sit here, right? I close my eyes. Are you here? I don't know. As long as my eye is open and my retina is okay and photons come from you and hit my retina, you are alive. When photons don't leave you and don't come and hit me, you, I don't know whether you are alive or not. This is called work like it, Maya, the real Maya. And today, E is not E is equal to MC squared, E is equal to M. Did you understand this? Energy is matter, matter is energy. In short, human body is an illusion of the human mind. So you are not body and mind, you are mind as body. So we used to say psychosomatic disease in the mind and all. All diseases are in the mind. The whole world is mind, did you know that? Francis Henry is a professor of physics in Johns Hopkins University who wrote, this universe is immaterial, there is no matter, immaterial. 
dash spiritual and mental full stop actually human body is immaterial spiritual and mental so now health is not absence of disease because there is nobody who has no disease we all have disease but we don't die of that disease because diseases are not supposed to kill but we doctors frighten you saying that ah you got a disease now you may die if we don't frighten you won't come to me so this is called disease mongering scare mongering so i call our system as medical scare system i tell you my god what's your tummy man so big you will die early there is no evidence to say that at all who had a tummy churchill had the biggest tummy did you know that he was 256 pounds he was smoking like a chimney and he was eating like a fish drinking like a fish not what the fish drinks and he was eating like a pig with all that and he was not exercising at all 89 years he lived nothing happened to him what happened to him nothing happened to him that doesn't mean you can also do that <laughs> your future depends on not just your body but on your mind i always tell people it is not what you eat that kills you whether it is fish or omega it is what eats you that kills you did you understand that your negative thoughts so ayurveda so beautifully says this krodha shokha bhaya ayasa viruddhanna bojana taponnalan katva amla kshara lavana tikshnoshnuti rakta pitta prakopayet all diseases come because of the mind and today modern medicine says the diseases originate in the mind develop in the mind and probably die in the mind or kill you in the mind and there's a beautiful book written by a nobel laureate girl young lady who got a nobel prize when she was still a post doc and her name is candace pert and candace writes this book called molecules of emotion because it's candace who first showed opiate receptors outside the brain showing that every cell has a mind which i call as membrane in the cell membrane there is a brain membrane and that has an antenna integral membrane protein because the cell is hygroscopic but the integral membrane protein is a whole and there is an antenna so when you get the universal consciousness come and tickle that you become born when that leaves it you die in short human body human being is like the picture of the television box the television box you see the picture of maybe hema malini dancing hema malini is not in the box the energy of hema malini's vibrations are caught in the antenna now you switch it off hema malini dies you go to the next room another television switch it on hema malini is born there human being is like that on the day we are a zygote when you are single cell i told you what is your weight the antenna gets the universal consciousness which gives you all the information in the world you are born the day it leaves you are dead in short this body is not you are not inside this body this is like the television box you are not inside the box but your energy is inside the box so human body is energy so now what is health then the latest definition of health is enthusiasm to work health is enthusiasm to work comma and enthusiasm to be compassionate full stop very simple you get up in the morning and say do i want to go to the college today do i really love to go to the college you are healthy do i have to do something good to somebody in the college you are very healthy don't ask for any other question and as long as you are healthy and you are able to work and be compassionate you are healthy says ayurveda samadatuh samagrishya samadoshah malakriya prasanna atma indriya manah swastha itya vidyate you sit well you piss well you drink well you eat well you sleep well you work well and you don't hate nobody you are healthy and that's what the latest quantum physics science says that if you don't hate nobody you will never be unhealthy that's why you see pc thomas at the age of 73 fit like a fiddle because he loves his students in the morning the first question he asks yan in the college pono cheri pono endu cheyano students help cheyadu athre ullu madi vera onnu doctor kaanamunnilla and i always jokingly tell people if you are healthy don't see a doctor if you want honor don't go to the police and if you want justice don't go to the court if you are not well you go to the hospital because we doctors have a formula from our father hippocrates cure rarely <laughs> when i tell the truth you laugh when i don't tell the truth also you laugh 
cure rarely, comma, comfort mostly, comma, but console always, full stop. Now, I will explain that. Cure is a word which has no meaning in medicine because cure in the Oxford dictionary says bring back to the original state, which is not possible at all in any disease. Even common cold, you have common cold, millions of no cells are dead, replaced by fibrous tissue. Can I bring it back? No. Comfort mostly. What is your job? Your pain, I can relieve it. Your breathlessness, I can relieve it. You can't breathe, I can make you breathe. You can't shit, I can make you shit. You can't piss, I can make you piss. I can't do nothing more. Now, if you can't do, I can't do anything, you have a cancer, I can't treat, I can console you. After all, you say, why are you worried? What is death? Death is not the end of life. Death is only a, you know, part of life. And supposing, let us say, God forbid, you won't die of this disease. Supposing you die, so what? You will either go to hell or heaven. That's where you wanted to go. Heaven is where you wanted to go and you are a good man, you will certainly go to heaven. Perchance, God has not, Peter, St. Peter has not kept his books right, correct. You go to hell, so what? So many of your friends are there, you are enjoying life there. <laughs> this is called consoling somebody.